He let him take those punches where he just took him without defending himself. I mean, I was like, what the f are you doing? And then once the fight kind of got going and you know some of those punches were landing, Big D kept telling him to stop or hold up. I'm like, f this. You want him to stop? That's cool. We'll go the other way. Because it wasn't about beating him up. It was about just winning whatever was at stake. Come on, finish it, bird. Come on, finish that shit. Stop playing. After a certain point, I think Big D had enough, you know, when his eye was into his face. And that's where half of his name came from. I guess slice was one way to describe how his eye looked. And he loved it. So, you know, he just put the two together. He's like, well, I'm not going to be Ferg Slice, but I will be Kimbo Slice. It don't stop. It never stops. Even at all his fights, I was never afraid of anything because I felt like nothing could, could touch him. He was such a strong guy that he, was, he wasn't going to get hurt. I went to a few of them. I was in the ring, too. Hit him, Kevin. Hit him, Kevin. He didn't want to see none of that. All day. It's hot to eat, man. My dad wanted everyone to put baby oil on him, so if the guy grabbed him, it'll just slip off. Mike was like, nah, I can't do it for her. I can't, I can't rub baby oil on you. So I'm in the back rubbing baby oil on him, you know, getting him right. The dude threw a jab, but stepped on the shoe at the same time. Hit him, first, hit him. And my dad, like, fell back. I was looking, and I, oh my God. I said, get him, Kevin, get him. And everybody was talking, get him, Kimbo, get him, Kimbo. <laughs> So mama dad has one shoe on and he's fighting, so he picks the guy up, throw him in the garage. He hit him with an uppercut out of the garage. The guy didn't want to get up. The guy like look up to the camera, you see these two knots on his head. It looked like like golf balls. Just a little bit of a knot there on your forehead, bud. I don't think nobody would want to go in the ring with him. I know I wouldn't. The internet transformed him into something that became a household name. You're fine, baby. That's it. I love you, boy. Fucking thing to fuck mom. Love you, boy. Where? Kimbo one day said, you know, I'm tired of coming to these things and I'm the only one fighting. He's like, you know, when I come, after I fight, I want to watch some fights. He's like, I got the perfect kid. It just kind of holds out, huh? I got it. 18 years old, I think, right around there. It's been a while and it's been a lot of punches in between. But yeah, I was pretty young. We were at the same gym out of Miami. Dave, they told me I was literally getting food through the drive-thru. And they're like, hey, you want to fight in a couple hours? I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And bam, we did it. We had set that fight up, and you know, he impressed everybody. I never thought it would generate the millions and millions of views that it's generated. It's one of the biggest fights that most people recognize me for still to this day. After that first one, we took him out to eat and, you know, we kind of bonded. At the time, that was like the fanciest place I'd ever been to in my effing life. It was mind-blowing fancy. Every piece of meat they bring out tastes like butter. I was just some spick from Miami, grew up hungry and is always hungry. I'm like, man, these people fucked up, man. I just ate as much food as I could. Mike paid for the whole thing. To me at that time, that was just mine, but who would do that? Why would you do that? We're gonna go three? Ponytail, what you think? Warriors. We'll go three. Oh, Warriors. you heard it right there. Warriors, man. <laughs> Whatever it takes. It's all about this, you gotta love this shit. 
So all together, these street fights kept growing and growing. And Kimbo started getting recognized, and it was happening quite often. But the first time that I realized that it went way beyond the internet, we went to a concert at the Miami Arena. And we're back there, and we look over, and Tyson was there. And Tyson calls us over. And he's like, hey man, I'm a big fan of your work. And I'm just blown away that this is even happening, and Ferg's amazed to shake his hand. I'll never forget this. Tyson says, can I give you one piece of advice? He's like, of course. He goes, don't ever go pro. He goes, you keep doing what you're doing. 